from Awaska night. I was one of the nine people in the group that night and I only took a 20 milligram dose. Here's my own version of the story. And so that brings us to one of the two major tales of La Semana de los Entheogenicos, that being La Noche de la Farmawasca. I met a young couple earlier in the week, Jay, the Hispanic engineer from MIT, and R, his Korean girlfriend. They'd been rambling on during dinner number two about the drug that they prized above all others, just going on and on and on about the incredible effects of this stuff, which was incredibly hard to find, called 2CB. So I listened politely for about 10 minutes of this. Then I took the canister out of my pocket and said in a very low, very calm voice, how would you like to try some of your favorite drug? Well, the details of the rest of that night are somewhat hazy, but somehow we became very good friends in a big hurry and they pretty much adopted me for the rest of the conference. On the next to last night, they dragged me off to a Farmawaska session. Just when I'd resolved to go drug-free that night to prepare my poor overworked serotonin receptors for the last night blowout. First, some background. Farmawaska, as you of course know, is any combination of an extracted MAO inhibitor, usually harmaline derived from Syrian rue along with a tryptamine such as DMT or psilocybin. As it turns out, Jay is preparing to market in Europe the following components in separate packages. One, pills containing 75 milligrams of harmaline, labeled as herbal energizer. And two, pills containing 10 milligrams of 5-MeO-DMT, labeled as herbal tonic. The point being that they will be sold separately, so that only those in the know, so to speak, will be aware that they must take two of pill number one and then four of pill number two in order to achieve orbital velocity. What a brilliant, devious, twisted mind that odd man possesses. So it was that I found myself in bungalow number three with eight other souls that night at 10 o'clock. The session was to be run by two would-be Caranderos, Steve and Stevie, the first a social worker, and the latter a sometime rock musician, sometime acid casualty. Their credentials were genuine experience of several Amazonian ayahuasca sessions, and a collection of shamanic power objects and doodads that were supposed to ward off evil karma. The other participants, the aforementioned J and R, plus T, a British pagan earth mother who hugged everyone and everything at the slightest provocation, M, a skinny, long-haired, sensitive, new-age guy, D, who looked and acted like a hippie pirate. Lastly, there was B, a Swiss Berger type, who turned out to be the rock-solid anchor that held the night together when everyone else fell apart. The ground was prepared for the sewing, the beds were taken apart and the mattresses placed on the floor, along with the rugs and sheets, to cushion all against the hard and hurtful places. Lights were turned out, and candles and incense lit. Steve and Stevie brought out a sack of wondrous things. Crystals, metal turnings, sculptures, dried herbs, mandalas, and an exquisite tiny monkey skull that caught my fancy later. The sacrament was passed out, and the chanting in the Icaros began. Then it was that my scientist persona emerged. There was a side debate over whether the Harmala pills should be taken some minutes before the trip, or simultaneously. Instructions were that all should be taken together, but I, the great western scientist, knew that the Harmaline had to go in first and knock off the enzyme so that none of the 5-MeO would be chewed up. But it turned out to be a bad idea to mix Western medicine and primitive shamanism. So some ended up dropping all at once, and others a half hour later. This broke up the feeling of unity among the participants, and also resulted in some getting a larger effective dose. As it turned out, these were also the people with the lower body weights, resulting in a range of doses from cowardly, 
I took 20 milligrams up to the foolhardy 40 milligrams in the case of M, who looked to weigh about 100 pounds. So anyway, the deed was done, and we were all dosed. And Steve and Stevie and Jay had some real pretty songs and chants going, and the base of my spine starts to vibrate. 5-MEO doesn't favor you with a fancy color pattern or carrier waves, or elves dancing on your chakras. It is pure power intruding into your core. It is a push, a shove, an acceleration, a rocket exhaust, a steadily rising voltage, like being at the base of the Grand Coulee Dam as an earthquake shatters the concrete wall and lets 50 million gallons of water follow the force of gravity towards your body and sweep you off into the great beyond. And you don't have any idea where it will tail off and allow you to breathe again. Higher and higher and higher. And yet again higher, and just as it starts to get unbearable, the peak is reached. And I settle down into the roller coaster and realize I will live. And I also realize that some of those around me have taken more than twice my dosage and are still rising up into realms inconceivable. At this point, all in the room are silent, recumbent on their mattresses and blankets and pillows, splayed out and desperate to hang on to the shards of reality. And then the groans and the moans begin. Those who took the higher dose are now trying to deal with extreme nausea and cramps. Steve, the primo Carandero, is hit the hardest. He begins to retch and puke into a plastic bag, transparent so all can see the full drama of La Purga cleansing his soul. Two others lurch onto the back deck to heave over the log railing into the backyard and then stagger back. Others such as J and R just twist and writhe in agony, but keep their stomach contents down as if such were a badge of honor in the midst of the battlefield. And on my right, M, the skeleton man, begins to contract his limbs like a pretzel and hyperventilates and emits tiny cries of horror which slowly accelerate and become more and more complex as he starts to coil like a steel spring and mutter and ululate. And then zing! He's up and headed to the back deck screaming, Please, please, please! Well, at this point... Only two of us were ambulatory and able to follow in pursuit, both having done 20 milligram doses. Yours truly and B, each got on either side of the fellow and held him up against the railing until Kirandero Steve came along to guide the flight. By now, M was into a major death trip and his screams had resolved into a loud, Please, let me live! Repeated slowly over and over. Steve had to talk him back into his body, using alternating love and logic in the best intrepid traveler fashion. And slowly, everyone else drifted out onto the deck in various conditions and levels of unreality. We made a ragged circle of seriously twisted souls, group hugging and singing and soothing the lost one back into a semblance of humanity. One by one, People would break away from the circle and go heave whatever fluids were left inside over the rail until it resembled the gutter outside a Roman orgy. After about an hour of this, M had returned to a merely transcendental state and we all went inside happy in order to compare notes. People were making up Icaros and drumming on whatever was handy and the good feelings returned for quite a while. I got into examining the power objects now strewn around the room, along with melted candle wax, half full barf bags, blankets, pillows, shoes, flotsam and jetsam strewn around as if the berserkers had marched through. Jay remarked to me that the experience wasn't as strong as he'd hoped for and he was a bit disappointed, despite having taken 40 milligrams, and said that he was almost straight. And then... There seemed to come a second wave of drug action. Everyone who had previously had severe nausea doubled over again and started groaning. My own stomach started to complain at this point. I almost lost it as the room started to breathe in and out. 
There was a general migration back to the deck, where J and R got into a hammock strung up between two poles, desperately trying to get comfortable. I missed what happened next, as there was a lot going on in my head and stomach, but it soon became apparent that we had another freak out. It seems that Jay somehow slowly regressed into an animal state, becoming hostile and assaultive towards any and all that there were out on the deck with him. Girlfriend R, apparently having seen this trip before, fled to the safety of the bungalow bathroom. Meanwhile, B and N were sort of restraining Jay, who was screaming out curses and general abuse to any who came near, while kicking and clawing anyone within reach. And the look on his face was one of absolute savage hatred. With four large men pretty much restraining him, I left the scene to check on M, who was starting to fray at the edges again, and R, who was in the bathroom sobbing away. Just then it all broke loose on the deck in the back, and I heard several people shout in succession, followed by a crash as a body smashed heavily into the rear window. Somehow the window didn't break, but the shouts resumed, and M, totally, totally freaked, ran past me out the front door and off into the general population, as it were. I followed him, and soon gently led him back into the madhouse when the loud noises stopped. Well, what had transpired was that J had bitten B severely on the hand, drawing a fair amount of blood, and in the confusion had broken away and run off at full speed into the window. He probably couldn't even see at that point. Well, he was shortly subdued and placed on his back with four people gently restraining him from gouging their eyes out. Bad karma circulating in that brain of his. He soon attained a childlike state in which he replied to anything that was said with, I don't want to, in a petulant tone. Brave psychonaut reduced to a three-year-old. The rest of the session was taken up with surrounding this infantile creature with kindness and trying to establish human contact, while the whole time he used any free limbs to try and inflict damage on anyone and anything within reach. Brave B, even though wounded, turned out to have a great deal of strength needed to keep this animal contained, while all around people continued to take breaks to dry heave or administer each other hugs and support for their still own fractured and tormented psyches. Well, it was a wonder that during all this, no other people came to investigate what in the name of Moloch was going on. Granted that the bungalow was on the edge of the compound. Several people told me the next day that they heard the screams, but I guess it wasn't that rare over the course of the week. And who wants to step into that degree of weirdness? So at that time, now 3.30 in the morning, everyone was whipped and at least starting to come down. And the Steves were obviously beginning to regret the whole endeavor. So the closing ceremonies were kind of forgotten and the game became, how do we get rid of this guy, Jay? Jay and R lived up on the hill in my sector, so the whole party ventured out of the bungalow en masse, escorting the crazy guy, with me lighting the way with my trusty flashlight. And one by one, without any farewell, people silently started to peel off and slink away to the shelter of their own cozy safe havens, until it was only girlfriend R and myself carrying the supplies, while poor B pretty much wrestled Mad J up the hill under the glare of the full moon. He was actually starting to recover his senses at that point, and went more or less under his own power while still emitting an unbroken string of curses. So we reached the dwelling place of J and R, finally, and the unhappy couple was deposited in their bed, with B playing chaperone for however long it took to be confident that J was not capable of murder. I took myself off to my own bed at that point, and slept right through breakfast the next morning, but emerged in time to hear Sasha's chemistry tour de force, and later had a pleasant conversation over lunch with a very flustered and repentant J who was blessed with a greatly enhanced respect for psychoactives and a whole lot of stuff to work through over the course of the next few months.